Hello there, IELTS students. Welcome to IELTS Podcast. You no longer have to worry, fret, or panic about IELTS because we are here to guide you through this test jungle. Enjoy these IELTS tutorials, and if you need more help or want to access the famous online course, you can visit us at IELTSpodcast.com. Hi, IELTS students. Welcome to this podcast from IELTSpodcast.com. In this tutorial, we are going to look at general IELTS task one, formal letters. I'm going to talk to you about everything you need to know before you start answering this question, everything you need to do while you're writing it, and how to get a really high band score. Firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is Daphne. I work with Ben and the team here at artspodcast.com. Let me tell you my IELTS story. I've been teaching IELTS for a long time. Originally, I started teaching general English and I was given some IELTS classes to do. I was thrown in the deep end, as they say, uh, given a class who had very little time to prepare for their exam and wanted a very high band score in three weeks. We all know how hard that is. So having tried to do that, I realized that IELTS was not a three week exam. You needed a lot of practice and the, the area that people found hardest was IELTS writing. So since then, I've really been specializing in IELTS writing. A lot of students come to me saying, how can I get my writing better? And these are some of the things that we look at with them. How to really understand the question is something so important and understanding what is needed. So with this task one, formal letters we're looking at, general IELTS task one, formal letters. This is the shorter piece of writing. So the examiner asks you to write around 150 words. Keep listening. We're going to talk about word count at the end because this is an issue where people have a lot of questions. But you should write this in around 20 minutes. What happens here is that you're given a prompt, which is like your question. And it's a situation and it's usually followed by three bullet points. So we're going to look at these bullet points, look at what to do. And later on, I'm going to share with you a real letter that I had to write. So that will show you how important this task is and how useful it is as well. So when you begin your IELTS letter writing, you need to read the prompt carefully. Make sure you fully understand what the situation is. Underline any keywords. Really important that. Take a pencil, underline the keywords. Next step you need to think about, is this a formal, a semi-formal or an informal letter? And there's some key words in the prompt in the question, which will help you here. Look at the situation. Look at who you're writing to. If you're writing to a friend or a relative or a teammate or a flatmate, then you can assume you're writing an informal letter. If you're asked to write to a company, somebody you don't know, a newspaper, a school, an organization, then the letter will be formal. Occasionally, you may have to write a semi-formal or what's sometimes called neutral letter. And this is the case if you're writing to a colleague or a neighbor. But most commonly, you are asked to write a formal letter. And as long as you understand the basics of a letter, that's important, but you may be unfamiliar with the specific requirements of a formal letter. There's quite a lot of differences between formal and informal. So let's have a look. First difference between a formal and an informal letter is the salutation or the greeting. This is how you begin your letter. So in a formal letter, you might be writing a letter of complaint or of apology or asking for information about something. You refer to the person by their official formal title. So Mr. Jones, Miss Wallace, or if you don't know their name, you prefer dear sir slash madam. Don't use the French madame with an E and don't use mom, M-A dash A-M. Okay, really important. Dear sir, madam is how we write in English. Now, sometimes the letters may say, begin your letter with dear so-and-so. And if that's the case, then do what the examiner tells you. Otherwise, 
For me, I think Dear Sir, Madam is the safest way to start. Formal letter, Dear Sir, Madam. The first sentence, you need to state the purpose of the letter. The reason for writing. And that reason for writing will be given to you in the title, in the prompt. The purpose of your letter might be to suggest, to complain, to thank, to express your gratitude, to apply for a job, or as we said, to request information. For a letter of complaint, for example, you could begin, I'm writing to express my dissatisfaction with the service I receive from your company. Or, I'm writing with regard to the poor service I recently received from your company. It might feel and sound to you like a lot of words, but this is what we do in formal English. It is very different from informal. Another common task you might have to do is write a letter of apology. So a letter of apology, same thing. You're going to start by, dear sir. And you might carry on like this. This is writing a letter of apology because you failed to turn up to an exam. You were absent from the exam and you're writing to the examinations committee to say what happened. I'm writing in response to your letter regarding my unauthorised absence from the mathematics exam held on the 24th of September. Case number M2342. My name is Deborah Green and I would like to first sincerely apologise for failing to properly notify the university of my inability to attend the examination last Tuesday. So you need to pause and rewind and listen to that again. But you can see the formality of that letter. It's not how we speak when we speak to somebody, but how we write is a different level altogether. This is what we mean by formal writing. We're not starting with something like, hi, I'm so sorry, I forgot to come to the exam. You'll hear it's a very, very different style. Formal letters also do not use contractions. So you can't use words like I'm, can't, couldn't, won't, isn't. You need to write the words in full. Another feature of formal writing is modal verbs. And modal verbs are really, really useful. Also in the IELTS uh, task 2 essay. So while both formal and informal use modal verbs, in formal letters you want to use the ones which are more connected to formal writing. So here we mean could, may, might, would instead of can and will. Can and will are much more informal. So the sentence, could you please provide me with information regarding the flat, is more appropriate in formal writing than saying something like, can you give me more information on the flat? So could you please provide me with? Also in formal writing, the expression, could you please provide me with more information regarding the flat, isn't just formal because of could, but also because of the other phrases that were used. So could you provide me with more information regarding the flat, as we said, is more formal than can you tell me about the flat? The meaning's the same, but the level of formality is different. So certain words in vocabulary are more formal. Uh, listen to this from a letter of complaint. I highly recommend your staff receive the appropriate training so they can avoid such instances in the future. Is more formal than you should teach your staff better so they don't do it again. Compare the difference. I highly recommend your staff receive training is more formal than you should teach your staff. It's getting into this idea of what is needed, looking at lots and lots of examples. On our course, we have a whole module on this formal writing, academic style writing. What do we mean by this? And you can really help yourself by looking at lots and lots of model answers, sending your essay and your letter to us for some feedback. That's a great way of understanding if you're on the right track and how to prepare best for your exam. Make the most of your preparation time. Get feedback. It's the fastest way to improve. Indirect questions is something else that's a feature of this formal writing. Rather than saying, can you tell me more about the weather? Or can I get vegetarian food near you? We need to turn this direct question into a more indirect question. How about this? I wonder if you'd be able to let me know 
if I can buy vegetarian food locally. I wonder if you could let me know if I could buy vegetarian food locally. This is much more formal and much more appropriate for a formal letter to someone you don't know compared to, can I get vegetarian food in the supermarket? So the whole idea of indirect questions is to, it's almost like a statement, but it's a question at the same time. The way we do this, we add phrases like, I would like to know if, could you possibly tell me if, would you mind telling me where or how, May I ask, or the one I used, I was wondering if. So the sentence order, other than that, is just the same as it would be in a normal sentence, not a question. So that's a really, really lovely way of asking for information, which quite often you have to do. Your final sentence in your letter, uh, your closing, it's called, also has to be formal. If you're asking for action to be taken, you can say something like this. I trust you'll see to this matter promptly. I look forward to hearing from you at your earliest convenience. Thank you in advance for your consideration. That might be of your CV or of your job application. Another quite common theme of the essay is to write a job application. So I enclose my CV for your perusal. Great word, perusal. We don't really use it when we speak, but it is quite a common word used in formal writing. And sometimes you might ask some, for some kind of communication in return. Please feel free to contact me at the email or phone listed above. And you don't need to put your phone number, obviously. But this is the sort of style that you want to show the examiner. When you sign off, there are also some specific rules. This is something that the examiner will look at immediately. They'll look at, dear sir, madam, at the top, and they'll quickly look to the bottom and see how you've ended your letter. So for dear sir, madam, you're going to write yours faithfully. This is a rule. This is what we call a convention. This cannot be changed. If you write the name of the person, for example, dear Mr. Smith or dear Miss Wallace, then you can end this yours sincerely. And that's okay for formal and also semi-formal letters. You capitalise yours, but you don't capitalise sincerely or faithfully. And then yours faithfully is never used in informal writing. Obviously, if you're writing to a friend, you could put see you soon or lots of love. Maybe someone you don't know so well, best wishes. So be really aware that your top of your letter matches up with the bottom of your letter. Let's thinking about organisation. If you're aiming for a really high band score in Alice, you need to organise your information well. Same as when you do the task two letter, we talk to you on the course, again, modules on this, about how to organise your letter so it's your task two, so it's coherent, so your sentences beautifully join together, your ideas join together. It's just the same here. You need to organise your information well. Make sure your appropriate paragraphs correspond to the information in the bullet points. A good rule of thumb is to have one paragraph for your intro, and then one paragraph for each bullet point and one for closing. Sometimes you can cover two ideas in one paragraph so it looks nicely spaced on that page. It's a good idea to put your orders in the same order as they're given in the question and that case is logical and almost like the prompt acts as a planning for you. That's a help. So let's look at some tricks. Here we go. Tip number one. Take some notes before you start writing. You can write some ideas on a rough piece of paper. You might have a brilliant idea. Maybe you've written this letter in real life and you want to include something that you know. Maybe you've had a terrible meal lately in a restaurant and you want to talk about that. Maybe you have a story from one of your friends you could include. Make it real. It will be much more effective. You're expected to develop each point well. So write down some ideas that you're going to use. Another tip is to pay attention to certain details in these bullet points or in the prompt. If the bullet point says, describe your suitcase and what was inside, you'll lose points if you only describe the suitcase and not what was inside it. And watch out for plurals. If the prompt says, give details about where you left the suitcase, but you only write one detail, this will, same thing, lower your score. 
So these are little details, but these are really helpful hints to get you towards that really high band score seven and above that you are looking for. So let's look at a question and let's look at a sample answer. And I'm going to share with you as well. This is a letter that I have written before. So this is part a student's letter and this is part some of my own experience. And I'm sure if you've traveled, you may well have had the same problem. The question here is to do with traveling by plane. So the question says, you recently traveled by plane but lost your suitcase. You filed a claim with the airline but have not heard back from them. Write a letter to the airline. Explain what happened. Describe your suitcase and tell them what was in it. Find out what they are going to do about it. Okay, three things you have to do. Explain what happened. Describe your suitcase and tell them what was in it. Those are your details. And find out what they're going to do. So you're asking for information. So get a pen before you listen on. Pause this, quickly write down some of your own ideas. What would you say? I'm going to read you this answer. So, dear sir or madam, and just so you know, I've checked the ending. The ending says, yours faithfully. I'm writing with regard to my suitcase, which was lost on Sunday, March 14th, when I travelled on BA flight 5445 from London to Oslo. I would like to receive some information regarding the status of my lost bag. I checked my bag in London, yet when I went to collect it at baggage claim, the suitcase did not appear. A representative at the airport opened a case regarding the suitcase, and there's a reference number there, and said someone will be in touch with me within 48 hours. A week has now passed, however, I've not yet received any updates. So there what I'm doing is I'm explaining the situation. At the very beginning, explain what happened. So my first sentence, I'm telling them what I'm writing about. I'm writing with regard to my suitcase, which was lost. Nice relative clause, adding information, which was lost. When I traveled, I'm giving the date and I said where I'm going. And then I've said the reason for writing, I would like to receive some information. So that's just two lines. I'm setting the context. Then I'm giving a bit of background. I checked my bag in London and when I went to collect it, it didn't appear. And then somebody's opened a case number. That's a bit confusing, a case and a suitcase. A case means a report, a file, and said someone would be in touch. And this is a lovely sentence. A week has no pa now passed. However, I've not yet received any updates. So that's a very nice, strong introduction. Here we're going into the detail. It says, describe your suitcase and tell them what was in it. The bag is a 20-inch charcoal grey hard side, <coughs> excuse me, Samsonite suitcase. It has four wheels and there is a black leather luggage tag bearing my contact information. Inside the bag, I have two pairs of shoes, several items of clothing, including three dresses and two pairs of trousers. So there's a lovely detail there about what's in it. I'm describing the suitcase, so I'm using appropriate vocabulary for description. I'm using some adjectives in there and I'm adding the detail that's required. Next section. I'm extremely disappointed that I've not been contacted by any representative of your airline and even more so by the failure to return my suitcase. So this is stating my state of mind. I'm extremely disappointed that. Very powerful language. It's not aggressive, it's not rude, but it's very powerful. I'm extremely disappointed I've not been contacted by any representative of your airline and even more so by the failure to return my suitcase. I would like some information regarding the whereabouts of my bag as soon as possible as the personal items in the suitcase are of great importance to me. I was informed by the airline representatives that I may be entitled to monetary compensation in the event my suitcase is not found. Please inform me regarding this matter. So in that final paragraph, I'm giving my state of mind. I'm disappointed. Then I'm asking for action. Find out what they're going to do about it. I'm asking for information. Where is it? 
and I'm also trying to find out, can I get any money here? Monetary compensation is like compensation, some money they might give me if my suitcase is lost, then I can buy some new things. So I may be entitled to monetary compensation. We've got that nice modal verb in there. I may be entitled. And then asking for action, please inform me regarding this matter. My final line, I thank you in advance and look forward to hearing from you. And then yours faithfully on the next line down. So it's a very formal letter. It's beautifully written. It's very nicely constructed. You'll be glad to hear I did get my bag back. It took a long time, but I did get it back. And I hope if you've ever lost a bag, you've got your bag back as well. Let's just look into this letter and why it would score a really high score, a band nine. Task achievement. It covers every single bullet point fully. It provides lots of detail. The information is relevant and it satisfies the task instructions. And the language is appropriately formal. Coherence and cohesion. The information is sequenced logically and it's well organised. The paragraphing is managed successfully. The cohesion is smooth. I'm moving gently from sentence to sentence. There's no bumps. It's very logical. Lexical resource, that's the vocabulary. The vocabulary here is sophisticated. It is high level vocabulary and there's a wide range of lexical words used, including less common words. Monetary compensation is a very nice way of saying, can I have some money or money back? So the vocab is really good in there as well. And also grammatical range. So there's a wide range of grammatical structures which are used flexibly and accurately. Now, you might be thinking that feels a bit long, yeah? And you're absolutely right there. It is longer than the 150 words, which is your guide. But what we have to say about IELTS is that this is very much a guide, okay? It is long. It's around about 240 words. Um, however, there isn't a maximum. Uh, sometimes I say to some of you I'm working with on the corrections, aim for about 180 words, this will give you a good band score, 180 words, and also make sure that you have time for your task two. Remember the task two has more marks than the task one. Task two has double marks. So it is right to focus on that task two more time than you do on the task one. However, it's quite difficult to write such a beautiful letter as that task one you've just heard me read in only 150 words. You might not be able to add so much detail and you might not be able to develop the bullet points fully. So find a happy medium. Get some feedback here. Send us your letters. Send us your essays. And we can guide you on how well you're developing them and if you need to add a bit more or if you need to take out a bit. So there's no official minimum, uh, but you do only have that 20 minutes. And also make sure you check very carefully for any silly mistakes. So generating ideas. How are we going to practice this? Some test takers worry that they won't be able to come up with any ideas, that their brain might freeze. This is a really common thing. What do I do? I can't think of any ideas. So here are a couple more tips. This is full of practical tips and suggestions, this podcast. Here are a few more tips that might help you put your mind at ease. So number one, get really comfortable with this formulaic, formal language we're using. Get comfortable with these expressions. I'm writing to ask for information. I'm writing to complain about. I wonder if you could. Really understand how we use them. Practice writing them out. Practice writing mini sentences with those in. And once you're familiar with these, you'll find that a lot of this letter consists of these phrases. And then really what you're doing is adding in the correct detail according to the prompt. If you think you won't have enough detail or you're not sure what to do, then have a look at our website, ieltspodcast.com. Look at general writing letters and look at some of the sample letters there. Now, some of the sample letters might not be exactly what you want, but they can help show you what kind of ideas might be appropriate and the kind of style we need for the different styles, the uh, letter of complaint, the letter of apology, letter of application. And then, of course, do some practice. 
And you may find that once you start writing regularly, you can recycle some of your ideas, you get a bit faster and you get into the flow, you get into the idea and the style and it becomes more familiar with you. Vocabulary is something else that we need to look at. So remember, you need to upgrade your vocabulary so your vocabulary is as formal as the style of writing. So high level vocabulary is what we're using. Develop your vocabulary. Use less common words. Use collocations. Those are the words which sit together really nicely. And also use topic specific words. If you're talking about restaurants, you know lots of words to do with food and restaurants and ordering and service. If you're talking about job applications, you know lots of words to do with talking about a good job and why you have the skills that are relevant. So there we go. That's the end of this podcast talking about IELTS formal general letters. If you want some help preparing for your exam, sign up for the newsletter. Keep tuning into the podcasts where we offer you a range of advice on all the tasks you need to prepare for. Send us your essay for some feedback and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks for listening. I'm Daphne. This is IELTSpodcast.com. Thanks for listening to IELTSpodcast.com.